Hello everyone, Bill Parrish here from GTT Audio and welcome to the channel today. And for those in the, in the U.S., happy 4th of July. We just celebrated it on Sunday and then also yesterday. So uh, I'm shooting this on Tuesday morning, the 6th of July. Today I want to talk about listening. And there's some stuff that I'm going to talk about that's been mentioned before on the channel, but hopefully we'll get a little more in depth on it and uh, I can describe it better. I, I truly wish that there was some way to show this, show examples in the, in the video to record listening sessions, but it's microphones come into play and really what you're hearing is the difference between uh well no matter what differences you hear at the end of the day you're hearing what a cheap uh relatively inexpensive uh microphone captured and you know nothing nothing can replace these even if i turned around and set up some very special microphones it would just be so much better if if i you know if there was some way that i could well for those that can listen and do listen with me and come in and do demos and ask about listening uh you know we we, we do it together we explain it they get it uh, but there's so many um so many people go down the wrong road i think you know, um, and uh, something happened uh, a couple weeks ago. That's how I get some of these ideas of what to talk to talk about. And uh, you know, it just had to, had to be uh, talked about. Um, there's there's a lot of components out there that have this thin, open, airy sound. And we're getting less and less of that, um, but certainly around the 2000s, early 2000s, that was a very popular sound, if you would. And it's so far from real. I mean, open and airy is good, right? But thin is not good. There is no live music that is thin. Every piece of live music Every instrument has body, has weight, you know, has, has resolution. And people get this thinness, uh, they, they hear this thinness, and they, mist they mistake it for resolution. You know, a couple weeks ago, I, I lent a guy a couple of cables, and he thought that, uh, well, one was looked sort of basic and the other was really pretty and one was like seven grand one was 3500 uh, USB cables and so boy they uh, hey, obviously the seven thousand dollar one has to be better right and that's what he reported to me how much better it was so the sound you know the the other one had some bass but the other one this huge huge sound stage you know, so much bigger. And I, I'm going to talk about this, I think, in terms of, um, remember the plasmas were now on the OLEDs now, but er, early digital uh, pictures, uh, you know, had you could see pixels. I mean, the very first plasmas weren't even high definition. I mean, they maxed out it. 720 uh, 720p there was no such thing as 1080 we would use 480p uh, you would use 480 interlaced uh, signals and upscale at the 480p and you know and then to three times uh, you know 3x which was, uh, was 720. anyway you could see the pixels in the in the plasma and the stuff today we don't see any pixels. Look at an OLED screen, and do you see any pixels? You don't. So it's kind of like high def versus low def, and in low def you see the pixels, and in high def you don't. And which has more resolution? The ones that have, where you can see the pixels? I mean, you can see the pixels. Is that giving you more resolution? Or are you getting more resolution on the screen that you don't see the pixels, that everything is continuous? I go for the OLED screen. 
And that's how it is in audio as well. So this guy says that this one cable is, is so much better and it has this huge sound stage. Well, first of all, if everything being equal across the board, then you look at soundstage. But soundstage is a hi-fi artifact. You don't go see a jazz band and think of the soundstage. You don't go see a symphony concert uh, and, and think of the soundstage. Soundstage is something that comes from our speakers, from our, from our electronics. It is a hi-fi artifact, but has nothing to do with real life. I, I, I would hope that we would all agree on that. So anyway, I sit down and I, I'm going to do this cable comparison. And yes, the one had a nice sound stage. Again, bringing it back to video, it was a 120 120-inch 120 screen. It was a 120-inch screen, but it was thin, open, and airy. There was no bottom end, there was no mid-range, there was no weight, there was no body. And it was looking, it was 120 inch, looking at, I'll, I'll give it 540p, okay? It was uh, 5, uh, yeah, or 480, you know, regular TV, blown up, pixels everywhere, certain things highlighted but you're never seeing the density. Now I put in cable B, and what I get is, I don't have a 120 inch screen anymore, I went to a 100 inch screen. But I'm looking at a 4K OLED picture where everything's continuous. I see, see it from top to bottom, and every, nothing is highlighted. Obviously, that's, that's the better one. But this, you know, and we're talking about a cable here, but this can happen in preamps, it can happen in amplifiers, in DACs. Go with, forget about soundstage. I mean, if, I'm comp if, if you're comparing two products, tonality is correct, dynamics is correct, you've got weight and body. If all that's the same, now you can look at soundstage. Now look at what that hi-fi artifact is doing. Uh, but, you know, I, I still contend the things that are most important is tonality is a given. Absolutely, tonally, must be perfect. And the, to, to fool you into uh, in the thinking it's real, because that's what we're trying to do, isn't it? When we listen to a stereo, don't we want to either bring that concert venue into our room or transport us to that uh, to that recording session it's one or the other but we want to be there we want to be there that's what it is and i think tonality it starts with tonality i don't know how you can how your mind can think you're somewhere how you can be transported if tonality isn't correct so you get tonality correct and then i think the the second most important thing is dynamics. I mean, the live sound. I've had so many clients over the years, and I commend them for how they describe this, but they say they want a live drum kit in their room. Now that is hard to do, but they're on the right path. You know, a live drum kit, talk about dynamics, talk about, uh, uh, pre sound pressure and if you know the the weight the the body of that kick drum the shimmer of the of the snare of the cymbals you know the snap of the snares a drum kit's a good way to measure it I can tell you that that first cable that cable on that 120 inch uh, screen with sound pixels all over the place, you would never, ever, ever get a drum kit in your room. But, cable B, where there's weight, there's body, there's continuousness from top to bottom, 
nothing is highlighted. When we're looking at to it on a 4K OLED screen, now you have the opportunity to bring the drum kit into your room. This is a really short video. I hope it makes sense to you. I, I, I hope it connects some dots. Forget about the thin, open, airy sound. Open and airy, again, is good as long as you have weight and body. But get rid of the thinness and the sound. We don't want thin sound. That it just is, there's nothing, there's no instrument in real life that has thin sound. So hopefully it makes sense. We'll connect with you in two weeks with a special guest. And uh, if you like this, please uh, subscribe, like, share, and we'll see you in two weeks.